you about a gap. Now, the gap that I'm talking about is the one that exists in our education system. Sometimes people talk about the attainment gap, but for myself, it's really quite simply a gap. When I look at that gap, I see young people falling down that gap and landing on the ground. And when these young people, when they look up, they look bored. They don't get it. Why are they learning this stuff? Where are they going to use it? They really don't get it. But most of all, it doesn't excite them. In fact, the only thing that's exciting them is that phone that they have wedged under that desk, and they're just it's buzzing away, Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope recently. And that is what they are excited about. It's that digital escapism. And that's what's got them. So I've been working with these young people over the years, and I'm a parent, so I've been sort of looking at this gap and thinking, why is it that we can put into this gap to block that gap? What needs to go into that gap? And through this working with young people, I've kind of come to a sort of very simple conclusion. There's a fundamental ingredient, and if we get that right, we can plug that gap. And what is it? It's fun. It's really simple. It's fun. If we put fun and plug that gap, then what we're doing is we're giving ourselves a chance to get them excited. And just maybe, with that excitement, they'll become creative. They'll start thinking. And if we can get that creativity flowing inside them, then that will fuel their curiosity. Now, curiosity, if we give them that, will ultimately propel their passions. And that propulsion is really important because with that propulsion, it means that they can self-sustain it. They can direct themselves now. And if passion enters their hearts, then painting their pictures will become their art. So let me give you some examples, because what we've been trying to do is put the fun back in. So this was a hackathon. And a hackathon is very much a quick, different types of people, different abilities, all coming together. and certain amount of time to do something and make something. So we took these 18 young people, and we, all of them are out of education, different kinds of social issues, mental, physical. And we said to them, we're going to set you a challenge. Your challenge is that you've got one week. And within that week, you are going to create and have a working prototype of an app. And they kind of scratched their heads and were kind of like, hmm, really? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, well, do you not need to go to a college or do some kind of course to do that? And we we're like, nah, let's just show you how we're going to do it. So let's give you the tools. We live in this digital age, and things are changing at a super speed now. And we talk about something called just-in-time education. And it's this ability to draw down education as and when you need it. So it's that bite-sized bit of knowledge that you require for a purpose. You watch a YouTube video, you watch it again, you figure it out, and you do it. So we gave them the tools, and we empowered them, and they went for it. And on a Friday, they stood up, and they had a panel of dragons. They had about 40 people, never ever presented, and they held their ground. And afterwards, you could see that they were lit up. They had passion. My next example, we were asked by the BBC working with a new computer that's going out to Prime 7s, the BBC Microbit. They said to us, can you make us a wearable technology fashion dress? So we came up with this 
Paco Rabanne 1960s inspired dress with LEDs that would move when the dance is getting done on the Strictly Come Dancing show. And the young people that knew we were doing this secretly that used to come up, they were loving it. This is fashion, this is cool, this is relative. We like this stuff. How do you do it? What's that? How does that work? The questions, they were en engrossed in it. And every time something, we'd even have to tell them to go away because it's quite late night and we've got to get this thing ready for the show. So the next example I've got for you is this. And this was us looking at neuroscience, that kind of big word that some of the kids couldn't even spell. And it's the kind of thing that you'd think you'd need a PhD before you can get to this, and it's the future, it's man meets machine, it's the whole robotics, bioengineering, wow. So we like to dis demystify it and turn education on its head. And we said to them, we showed them some science fiction inspirations, the Iron Man and all these kind of things that they watch. And we said, we're going to cook this up and make it in two hours. And they're like, no way, that's cool. And we enabled them with a bit of simple electronics and a grabby hand from Poundland to create their bionic arm. And within two hours, they were all wired up and they were twitching their muscles and their hands were moving like that. And they were engrossed and they could believe it. And they knew they were walking away. If anybody ever talks about bioengineering or neuroscience, they're like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I get it. They loved it. Now, Minecraft. Can I have a show of hands if anybody in the audience has ever played Minecraft? Quite a few. You guys are cool. <laughs> Now, can I have a show of hands of anybody that knows a young kid, a young child that plays Minecraft? More hands. The point is this. We need to stop trying to get young people to understand our worlds, and we need to get into their worlds. It's more fun, plus they own the future. And of course, if anybody doesn't know what Minecraft is, it's, it's a virtual world, Lego, type thing, and you make your own world in it. So we jumped into their world, and we thought, right, let's become bigger kids than the kids. And so we figured out how we could take one of their ideas from within that virtual world, and we could actually 3D print it into the physical world. So we went through the virtual, and we now made it real. And when the kids found that out, they said, go and show me how to do that. That's that curiosity. They want to know how to do that. We went a stage further, and we actually enabled them to go through their Minecraft world and hit a lever and actually switch the light bulb on and off with a bit of Bluetooth. And they were mesmerized by that. They were running into their schools, and they had something cool to talk about. So for me, it's quite simply the conclusion is this, and I think you'll all agree, that we can all do with a bit more fun in our lives. Yeah, nobody would say no to that, okay? So I'm all for putting much more fun into our education system. Thank you very much.